The following video contains an explanation of effective nuclear charge as presented by Michelle Chin and Alex Xiao. The structure of an atom is composed of a central nucleus containing positively charged protons and neutral neutrons and is surrounded by electrons. To keep things simple and illustrate this concept clearly, these electrons are located in orbitals that go around the nucleus at a fixed distance. These electrons orbit around the nucleus like planets. However, imagine that you can have several of these planets or electrons on the same ring as others. These imaginary rings or orbitals can only hold a maximum number of these electrons. The first ring can only hold a maximum of two electrons, and the next one can hold eight, and the subsequent orbitals can o also only hold a maximum of eight as well. We'll ignore the other elements after calcium as they introduce the D and F orbitals, which operate under the same concept, but require a deeper understanding of orbitals and where they fit. Atomic number corresponds to how many protons, and because these aren't ions, and electrons an atom has. The effect of nuclear charge, by definition, is the positive charge experienced by the outermost electrons in an atom, which are called valence electrons. Electrons and protons have opposite charges. If, hypothetically, a proton is plus one, then the electron would be a minus one charge. Therefore, to find the effect of nuclear charge, you would subtract the number of electrons on the inner shells from the protons. For example, helium has two protons and two electrons. To find the effect of nuclear charge on a valence electron, there are two protons and no inner electrons, or electrons on an inner orbital. Therefore, two minus zero is two. So the effect of nuclear charge on an outer electron is two. Take another example, beryllium. There are four protons and four electrons in beryllium. However, the first orbital can only hold two electrons, so there is a spillover and two electrons in the second orbital. Therefore, to find the effective nuclear charge, four minus two equals two. So there's an effective nuclear charge of two. Here, you can try another example. What is the Z effective for calcium? The answer is 20 minus 18 equals 2. There is the first orbital with 2 electrons, the second orbital with 8 electrons, and the third orbital also with 8 electrons. Therefore, 2 plus 8 plus 8 equals 18. However, finding the actual Z effective isn't quite so simple as using this hypothetical or theoretical example. There are multiple reasons for this. Firstly, the actual Z effective wouldn't be the same because electrons in the same outer valence shell would repel each other because like charges repel like. Also, the, the, as we know, the, the Bohr model for the atom is far too simplified. Electrons do, absolutely do not revolve around the central nucleus in such an easy to predict circular fashion. They're more like clouds and therefore we can only find the most probable location of an, a given electron. We can't know the actual definite location. Finally, what is the real application for finding effective nuclear charge? Effective nuclear charge affects other uh, characteristics of an atom, such as atomic radius and ionization energy and electronegativity. As Z effective increases, the atomic radius decreases in an atom because of the higher positive charge experienced by the valence nuclei. Uh, ionization energy and electronegativity are affected as, as Z-effective changes simply because it is easier to remove or um, attract electrons based on um, the nuclear charge that the valence electron already experiences.